Jerry has shit on you. <laughs> don't, don't you, you get it? Jordan, uh, don't you understand? Like, Jerry Jones shit has shit on, on us. They have shit on us. They have shit on us. They have shit on us. Don't you hear me? Don't you hear me? Don't you get it? They shit on you. They have shit on us over and over and over again. Oh, my goodness. Did he say they, they cock it on them? They hate the style. Uh, they, they literally have shit on us. And the thing is, is we are so stupid. Everybody's been going through this week and literally said, you know, Jerry Joe, we go. Hey, we going all in, man. We going all in. So I, I'm starting like a new series that as we go through with all the free agents. OK, I, I, I've got two of them out already right now. You know, Derek Henry, we had Swagoo, who, who actually wants to see the Cowboys win. This, this was Swagoo. There were red zone issues last year. There was a, a need for a physical back. And shout out to Rico Dowdo. I thought he did a good job. Tony Pollard is not a every down back. I think we saw that this year. Derrick Henry should be a priority for the Dallas Cowboys. If you want to be a physical running football team and you want to have a big physical back in the red area to dictate what teams have to do defensively to defend you in that area of the field, this should be your call. I said it during the season. I'm going to continue to say it. Derrick Henry should be a top priority for the Dallas Cowboys mm -hmm. if they are trying to go all in and have an opportunity to win a championship. Tell him, so, Flag. So, so I will say this, Marcus – Spears is not one of those guys that is all about TV. Marcus Spears will tell you. Where is the right landing spot for Derrick Henry? Uh, we Jerry, had a fan. Jerry yeah. said he's all in. We had, there were red zone issues last year. Right. There was a <laughs> exactly what he feels. And what Marcus Spears walked up to a mountain of a man, might I add, in Derrick Henry last night and said, oh, is see. you should go yeah. to the Dallas Cowboys. Oh, and you know what? Mm -hmm. I'm going to see him say out now. I don't know sign language. What did Derek right, say? What did he say? Right. I'm going to tell you what. I can't read good? lips. It looked positive. Okay. I know body language, though. I know what the body language said. <laughs> and the body language said, hell yeah. <laughs> when, when I looked at Derrick Henry and when Marcus brought that up, there was nothing but smiles on his face. Oh. I'm not sure if people know this. Where does Derrick Henry live? Dallas. Whoa. Where does Derrick Henry train in the offseason? Dallas. Dallas. Where would Derrick Henry not have to drive for? get when the season started Dallas <laughs> and he said he would be happy to go there so I don't know whoa this might not hey, be I, this not tampering quick, I don't work for the quick, Dallas Cowboys quick moment here we're but, not putting this on the bottom line okay we're not Adam Schefter you exactly what he feels and what Marcus Spears okay so I'm trying to start to try I, I, I listen listen man listen I you know let me say Shout out to you guys. Shout out to you guys because I am truly humbled because we are over 81,000 of you guys. And I appreciate each and every single one of you guys. 81,000. You, you look shocked. Oh, you're close. You're close to your plaque. Well, shit. That's, that's 18,000 some odd I away. I saw it was six. Well, okay, I yeah, yeah, it's growing. It's it's all it's all because of you, Mike. You you and your meltdown. Oh yeah. Okay, the meltdown up. You know, people love to see us like literally falling out. But but here's the thing. I I, I want to with with the eighty one thousand of you guys that I have, the 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 group that I have, and I hope that Law Nation takes the group that he has. I hope that Vosh Lombardi takes the group that he has. I hope that Game Time Brian takes the group that he has. I hope that DMV takes the group that he has. I hope that my man E2 Blue takes the group that he has. I hope the guy, my my, my cowboy family, takes the group that he has. I hope that, that Simon Says takes the group that he has. I hope that, that the Duke bothers takes 
the group that he has. I hope that the room takes the group that he has. I hope that Foots the King takes the group that he has. I hope that Shango takes the group that he has. I hope that West Coast Cowboy takes the group that he has. That we all, and I'm sorry if I'm not naming everybody out there, and there's so many content creators that are out there. There's so many great ones out there that we all take every single one of our people and we try to hold these Dallas Cowboys that are shitting on us that are shitting on us and bullshitting us every single year that we hold them accountable. When you tell us some shit like we're going all in, we need to show them so they understand what the hell all in means. That doesn't mean getting rid of a Zeke Elliott and saying to Tony Pollard, who's a scat back and a part-time running back, you are now a workhorse because you're not a workhorse. That's some bullshit, Jerry, that you didn't get to us. That's you shitting on us. Jerry, you bringing in an Anthony Barr after getting rid of Jalen Smith, knowing that Leighton Van Der Esch has injury problems, drafting undersized guys late in the round and figuring this is good enough. That's shitting on us. When you go into a season with a great future Hall of Fame offensive tackle in Tyron Smith that when he can play, you know he can play great, but not making a backup plan for him because you know he is going to miss time. You are shitting on us. When you have players out there who can fill a need that actually have a desire to play for you, like a Bobby Wagner who says, I'd like to play for Dan Quinn and your team, and you don't have anybody, and you go out there and you sign Anthony Barr, you are shitting on us. When you go out there and you literally point the finger at the quarterback and say, well, we're only going to go as far as he goes. When the defense gives up over 40 points and you don't go out and get a decent running back and a good offensive line for him, you are shitting on us. Don't you get it? Don't you understand? You are literally shitting on us, the fans, that are here bigger than any fan base out there. There is nobody out there that's got them boys. There's nobody out there spending the money like we do. There's nobody out here pushing your brand like we do. And what do you do in return for the $9 billion? The $9 billion that you are worth when you literally bought a team that was losing $2 million a month and you gambled every nickel that you had and could have lost it. But we, all of us YouTubers, all of us great fans, every single one of us made you the man that you are with all of that money. And what do you do in return? You shit on us. You lie to us. You bullshit us. That's what you're doing. And we need to keep you accountable. Philly, 500 pounds. I don't never seen you before. You can kiss my high yellow hind parts. The Cowboys were losing long before Joe Boo broke. Long before Joe Boo. If you want to talk about somebody maybe that's jinxing them, maybe we ought to look at Rowdy because they got him after our last Super Bowl. And you, brother, brother, I know you ain't talking, you sorry-ass Eagle fan because you didn't have a damn voodoo doll. And what happened to you when you had everything there? You choked in the Super Bowl. You choked. And what happened to you guys? See, I mean, listen, I'll take the crap right now for the 49ers. I'll take the crap from the 49ers because you guys crapped the bed. You did. You were 10 and 1. 
10 and freaking one. You know, when we beat Tampa Bay, you know, with, with Tom Brady and blew them out, we were told, oh man, they, they ain't nobody. You lost to Baker Mayfield and that crew, bro. Now get your ass the hell out of here, man. This is grown people talking. Grown people talk. Run your ass back to your mama's basement. Got it? I don't know why you Eagle fans feel that you're in, in a position to talk some smack. You guys got Kellen Moore with your sorry ass quarterback. You're going to find out. You're going to find out. That's all I got to say. But listen, you're messing up my conversation with my people. And that is, we need to see actual results. I'm tired of hearing bullshit from Jerry saying, you, you, you know, when you're the owner of the team and you're the GM, you can't fire yourself. Why not? Why not? Fire yourself. You got enough money to pay somebody else to do the job. You got your hands in all this real estate and all these other things. You got exactly what you want. Dysfunction. You got everybody talking about you. You got everybody's eyes on you. I think it would be a lot better to have people say, my God, the Dallas Cowboys got their shit together. They took a fourth round drafted quarterback. They and got him to the Super Bowl and they win. They reclaimed and got Mike McCarthy to become the first coach to win a Super Bowl in two different places. You got six rings. You're only one behind. Then say uh, uh, New England that you did it your way. That you are the greatest. See, see the problem with you, Jerry, is you think that you got to have your hands on it for it to count to be a Super Bowl. No. Does anybody look and say Robert Kraft's Super Bowls don't count because he wasn't picking all the players? No, they just look at it and say they got more Super Bowls than anybody else. And it just hit me how sick I am about this. Our problems are not major problems. They're not difficult. They're not impossibilities. It's not like we are the, the commanders that haven't had a quarterback or anything like that. that. That it's a place where careers literally go to die. The part about it that makes you so pissed off is you are so freaking close, but you won't do what the hell it takes to get there. It just makes me sick. How the hell can you look at it and say, we got a 12 and five team. If all we need is, look, if we had a running game, if we had had a decent running game, our offense would have been unstoppable. Maybe if we had an extra, you know, really good offensive lineman, not a rookie undrafted free agent, a guy who's actually got some experience. So when Tyron Smith goes down, he can fill in. He can move around. Maybe somebody that can help out while you still let Tyron Terrence Steele finish recovering from his ACL instead of him being a turnstile. The fact that your quarterback had 36 TDs <coughs> and only nine interceptions more than anybody else this year without a decent running game. And don't give me this shit. Well, we were 14th in running the football. 14th? You think 14th is good enough to be a Super Bowl champion? Take a look, Jerry. Take a good look at how complete these teams are that are competing in the Super Bowl. Take a good look what they do on the lines. Take a good look how they control the game. And we all know when it comes to playoff time, you must run the football. As great as Micah Parsons is, now we got people out here, you know, literally shitting on that guy, saying he's selfish. He's selfish. Dude, you know why they didn't ask you to play two positions? Because you weren't good enough to play one. They didn't ask you to play tight end at an elite level and wide receiver. Now, you're literally going ahead and taking a guy who has got 14 sacks and is the only guy with double-digit ones on the team, got more pressures probably than everybody else on the team, put together, and you're going to say, that guy is selfish because he's not an elite linebacker too. Th are you serious? We take this stuff where people are literally shitting on us, and we get pissed off at each other. We go at each other's throat and say, Dak Prescott's not the answer. And Mark Holmes, you're just, you're just, you're swinging from Dak Prescott's nuts. 
You're just swinging. You're just a Dak Prescott lover. No, what I recognize is is that Jerry Jones, Stephen Jones, and those guys, the kind of guys they want for quarterbacks, let's think about it here for a second. You go through, instead of trying to get get Derrick Henry, you get Trey Lance. Uh, running back, linebacker, offensive line, defensive line is where we need help. We go out and get another quarterback. But beyond that, when we had Tony Romo body parts falling off on the field, Jerry, the guys you wanted to get to replace them, Connor Cook, did he actually even throw a pass in the NFL? Paxton Lynch couldn't make it in what, what, what's the, 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 the damn uh, the, the, the other leagues called? Might as well call minor leagues. I, I mean, I can't remember. USFL. Hell, Ben DiNucci played better in the USFL than Paxton Lynch. These are the guys that, for all of you out there that are saying, trade Dak and let these guys take the draft picks and get another guy. Are you serious? Paxton Lynch, Connor Cook. Oh, and I, I can't forget, Jerry, Jerry, instead of taking Zach Martin, he wanted to get show me the money, Johnny Manziel. Maybe he thought he could be a drinking partner. I don't know, but, you know, Jerry, we're going all in. See, you're going to say some shit like that, and then you're going to do what you did last year, because I'm assuming that you thought that last year was going all in. Hey, we made two trades in the offseason. We, we got a former NFL MVP. Okay, who's past his prime? Stefan played good. He played good. He's a nice piece. Brandon Cooks. He's a nice piece. But that's not enough. That's not enough. What have the teams that are winning Super Bowls done? We know what we all know. We all know what going all in looks like. Tampa Bay, they go out and they get Tom Brady. Get Tom Brady. They get Gronk with them. They get guys like Nama Kinsu and other players. They get AJ Brown. They they go they go all in. Yeah, it's a risk. But what's kind of funny is a couple years later. They're back in the playoffs, and they went further than you with your long game, Jerry. You got the, hey, we got the long game. That team won the Super Bowl a couple years ago. They lost the greatest quarterback of all time. They get a journeyman quarterback and get some help and things, and they're back in the playoffs and go further than you. We saw the Rams go out, trade for Matthew Stafford. Go out, trade for Jalen Ramsey. Go out and bring in, you know, Von Miller and Odell Beckham Jr. before the knee injury. They win a Super Bowl. And guess what? They were back in the playoffs. And they weren't playing the long game. Those are the same guys, Steven. 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 That you said, you know, we don't believe that the way the Rams are building building a team is the right way you build a team. Right after they won the Super Bowl. Right after they won the Super Bowl. And people looked at them and said, man, they ain't going to do shit this year. Man, they ain't going to be any good. They're rebuilding. They're fire still selling shit. You know, that's it. And here it is. They're in the playoffs. The Eagles... Missed it by that much. They went out there and said, hey, let's make a trade and get ourselves, you know, a great wide receiver. A.J. Brown. We, we, we got that, right? They got A.J. Brown, okay? They got Devontae Smith. That's, that's pretty good, okay? You know, our quarterback going into the season. I want you to understand, as much as I hate the Eagles, Jerry, you can learn something from the Eagles, bro. You can learn something from the Eagles because what they had was going into that season that they went to the Super Bowl, they had questions whether or not Jalen Hurts was the guy. And instead of taking one of his 
really good running backs away instead of not doing anything with the offensive line they said we're going to go out we're going to support him we're going to get him a good running game we brought in a couple more running backs we went out and got him a great receiver we made sure the offensive line was studded and we supported the quarterback and they rewarded him by going all the way to the super bowl and and getting this close this close to winning and they went all in now they they were ass ass the second half of the season and just <laughs> crashed and burned but i think if we as a cowboys fan base if we saw jerry jones and stephen jones go out here and say you know what we're actually we've been bullshitting you for all these years we apologize thank you very much for making us multi-billionaires and as a thank you to show that i'm genuine we really are going to go all in because we want to win this, not for us. I've got five Super Bowl rings and everything else. I got more money than I can do anything with. I don't have to buy my wine at 7-Eleven. I just choose to because I'm cheap. And I was in a hurry. I got myself a his and her helicopter. You know, I don't know how big my mansion is, but I can guarantee it's pretty big. I got a yacht that probably is bigger than majority of our houses put together. And because I've got all of these wonderful things because of you guys that believe me when they say a sucker is born every minute, I'm going to finally reward you with actually trying. We are not going to wait till the last minute to try and do things. We're actually going to go ahead and actually try and do something. And I'm going to take Stephen Jones and I'm going to throw him up against the wall and lock him in a closet and let somebody else really handle this thing. Instead of having a team like the Detroit Lions call us during the draft and say, hey, we got a guy we'd like to trade with you. What do you think? I'll call you back and then not discuss it with anybody. You, my friends, and you, and you, and you, and you, all deserve better than that. And James, yeah, that, that, and here, here lies why nothing changes, James. Joe Witt, of course, is going. Everything with the Cowboys is two steps late. You don't deal with free agency because you don't want to spend money until, you know, the dust clears. You don't even deal with your own players.